I, I'm Steve Battle, I work with Community Finance Solutions. Um, I used to work for a housing association in London and I felt then that we were getting distant from the communities we were trying to help. We had money from government for providing affordable housing and housing for part equity sale and for going to communities and trying to come up with solutions. But it was clear always that the communities themselves know best what's, what's needed in their community. So um, housing associations were getting larger and larger and more and more remote from those communities and were trying different ways of getting back down. And uh, I helped set up an organisation called People for Action, which Bob Passon was later involved with as well, which was trying to say, with all this money being spent, there's more it could do than just deliver housing. Mm. And those things that we deliver in addition to housing, and indeed the housing itself, should be delivered in partnership with the communities and for those communities. So when I stopped working for housing associations, and got involved in some other things. So why community land trusts? Well, community land trusts are a, a way of creating a, a legal entity which is owned and controlled by the community itself. I think you have to get your community on the side. There's just no point in the half of us to be deciding this is what you want to do. I mean, you know, we needed to get the community on the side, and we've done that through a whole series of exhibitions, through consultation exercises. We've you know, had 300 people through an exhibition over a weekend from the parish and, and really brought people online. And we keep people informed through the local newsletter and through every month of the parish council to report on what's happening in terms of the project and so on. And community is at their very heart. And there was a lovely lady who's, I can't see at the moment, who spoke passionately about why she wanted to be involved in community land trust development as opposed to other, other ways of volunteering. And it's so much at the heart of what we do that uh, we don't want to lose that in the legislative frameworks and the bureaucracy and the regulation that runs around it. Do you want to stay involved? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think, um, I think the, C the CLT Academy is um, exciting and the way forward and, and something they've developed in the US as well. Yeah. Um, I think Tell us about that, what is that? Well, developing sort of training sessions for community land trusts um, so that they don't have to go through all the hoops on their own. And oh, he is a movement capable of supplying both if you like the empowerment which is sought plus also the practical reality of providing homes and other community owned assets. We have to start, start talk, stop talking about grants and start talking about investment opportunities. How do we get yours and my savings into projects like this? What are the methods to do that? You know, it's not just pension funds, it's raising money locally. So we've been really successful. Everybody seems to have enjoyed themselves. And, uh, most people stay to the end, which is a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> I lo love this. It's my learning nugget for today, really. Um, unusual suspects. <laughs> because it is about saying that unusual suspects are actually the germ of change. You know? And they have to be celebrated and recognised and supported. And I think if you look back on the the early adopters in the CLT movement, one of the things that came through the evaluation work was about, they were quite often driven by unusual suspects. My belief that we can go forward. I wouldn't like to predict where we were next year, but for my money, I hope that we're actually going to celebrate more success and that we're actually on the path of you know, achieving a sector and have the like the structures to a trade body actually in place to, to see it on and I can retire. Thanks for listening. <laughs>